Second favorite is Super Bowl Sunday. That's another big holy day. But 420, dig this year, man. Yeah, that's what it's all about. It's about freedom, freedom of the brain, freedom to do good things for yourself. Right on. I ain't knocking nothing, but I gotta tell you, my life changed a lot when I get into this stuff. <laughs> it was for the better, too. <laughs> Anyway, enjoy this day. I'm yeah. loving it. The name of this group, Dead Grass. How about that? Yeah. yeah. Good to see you here. Oh, I'll tell you about 420, man. Uh, we didn't even know it, me and my wife, back in 1957. You know, nobody knew about 420. Very few of us had even been down with Willie Nelson by then, but uh, we were there. And... Uh, we went to see a priest, a nice old guy, Father O'Halloran, and he looked just like the guy did in the movies, you know. Uh, what's his name? Uh, not, not out the shields. Uh, uh, yeah, he was nice. Uh, Brian Fitzgerald. Yeah, man, Barry Fitzgerald. And he looked just like that. He called his paws of the devil. <laughs> I was stupid, you know. I went in and I said, yeah, man, I said, I know you can't marry us right now because it's Holy Week and all. I said, the statues are covered. I said, but there's no hurry because, you know, we're living together. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Hans and the devil, you'll be in here Saturday. And Saturday was 420. And so it's our anniversary today. 61 years. Happy anniversary, Patrick and Marlene. Extremely patient woman. How do, you, how do you stay married for 61 years? I don't know, man. She must be out to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it, no, we were both in it for the, you know, I said, let's go to California. We went to California. Come home one day after smoking a couple of joints. We were living in suburbia. I said, why don't we sell this place and go down to Trinidad and work in, the, in your mother's hotel? Yeah! I said, it looks like Nixon's going to be reelected. Let's get out of here. <laughs> we go down to Trinidad and Tobago and we meet all these gotcha people. And I had a beard and long hair by then, you know, so it was like, oh my. The first day I go to... My wife says to me, now don't get me in trouble down here. And that's my country. I said, don't worry about a thing, man. And I go to mail a letter. Well, when you go away from where the hotel is in British West India Airlines, you're into neighborhoods just like in New York City. You leave 95th Street and Park Avenue, you got a doorman and a Mark A, and you get to 97, you better brush up on your Spanish and you better know why you're there, man. And that's cool. That's life in cities, man. And if you're not out to hustle people, you'll be welcome anywhere you go. They don't care what you look like, you know. Anyway, I'm running, I'm going down the street like a ninja guy with a red, white, and blue hat on. And jeez, I look like something from one of the comic books, you know. And the guy says, hey, hippie, you want to smoke? <laughs> I said, I ran over. I said, what are you trying to do? Get me in. Oh, don't be silly, boy. Come in here. And I go in this garage, and there's a band working out. I, and I don't know no point. I got to tell everybody that. I, I don't know nothing, but I love to listen. And uh, they take me to this garage. We smoke a whole lot of guns. And they wrote songs, man. So that was my intro. And I've always found it that uh, I find Griefer, uh, along with music, as brotherhood trips. All right. I don't see how you can be hating people if you're smoking Griefer and if you're listening to music. You can't be hating people because they're the wrong color, whatever that happens to be. And uh, I gotta tell you that I find them as unifying things, and I welcome them. And, uh, speaking, speaking of brotherhood, uh, you're the older brother of George Carlin. Yeah. On, on 420, I, I don't, what would you do? Could, could, sure. could you smoke more pot? Uh, well, what can you do? No. Hey, don't talk to me about smoking a lot of pot. I am nothing compared to these musician guys that I meet. I remember the first night I met Levi. He had a big scissor call like that. I said, wow, this is wonderful. You know, I was, I was in heaven because I always dug it. Uh, it was good to us back in the bicentennial year. You know, we were smoking Santa Marta Rojo and Santa Marta Oro from uh, sorry, Colombia. We were up in Vermont working for $2.30 an hour. And I was keeping it cheap when I'd go score off the Harvard kids. So that the people I was working with, they got what they call a working man special. A little bit of bread, a little bit of gold, a little bit of hash. And it was cheap. It was we all, you know, we all living on 2.30 a month. And these were these weren't all hippies, man. These were people that were like third generation Vermonters, you know. Real, real good people, man. And they 
closed the place on December 1977, two weeks before Christmas, because $2.30 an hour was too much. And we're going to North Carolina, baby! So yeah, man. And uh, you gotta be cool to that stuff, and you gotta know that uh, it's us versus the corporations. And if they don't like to hear that, that's tough, but that's how it is. Patrick Carver, 61st wedding anniversary. Congratulations. You got big uh, plans for the anniversary? What are you doing for the anniversary? Everybody's eating lunch and, 